Hey guys, what's going on? Andy Patnow here at Andy Patnow Golf. Just going to do a quick little video for my man Ari and talk about the dangers of trying to hold all this lag and trying to get some you know, extra power by trying to hold angles for so long. So I'm not a big huge fan of trying to hold angles. I'm a big fan of learning how to you know, store angles and let the angles go out. All right? And I think sometimes people would start getting the idea of trying to hold all this lag and it actually starts hurting them and starts creating more injury problems and some swing issues as opposed to you know learning how to store angles and learn how to unload angles, right? We're not trying to hold on to anything, right? And usually we know how to have proper lag and how to have proper dynamics to your swing is learning how to use your pivot correctly. And your pivot can go from learning how to use your feet, knees, hips, shoulders, arms, thorax, all those kind of different ideas and actually how to use the club correctly with your body to learn how to actually maintain proper lag and actually have proper sequencing in your golf swing. So I'm just going to use Gary Woodland as an example here for Ari and talk about the difference between having kind of a sharp hand path and kind of a wide hand path and you know where I think having a better idea of having a wide hand path compared to a sharp hand path and how that can maybe have you guys benefit from playing some better golf and obviously have, have Ari play some better golf. So as you guys notice here I have some dots drawn here on Gary Woodland and Ari and I got a yellow line representing here so you know on the left I had a pretty stationary camera for Ari since I was shooting it and then on the right here at Gary Woodland I pulled this one off of YouTube and it's just a nice little swing vision of him in kind of a three wood and you know three wood driver relative to the same ish swing and then from here I remember watching this on TV and this thing was bombed like 295 yards in the air with a three yard so obviously he's not going any back and he's going full front full frontal on this thing and just going you know hitting this thing a mile so anyways long story short let's talk about the difference here so I drew a blue line on a gentleman's leg up there because I know he's not moving around and I know this camera moves around a little bit just giving you guys an idea. So if you see that thing move around, let's say if it goes to his right leg by two inches, imagine that line being two inches in a different spot as well. All right, so let's take Ari to the top of his backswing here. Okay, so he's going to have a little lateral shift off. He's not going to kick in a whole lot of extension in his upper spine and his right shoulder, basically. So he has he'd have very minimal thorax you know, extension here. So he's got this kind of straight back look almost. So not bad there, but kind of kicks it in a little bit later than I want and he kind of compresses down a little bit as opposed to kind of having some extension where again Gary Willen does a little bit of that but you can see a little bit different look kind of halfway back in their back swings here and you can kind of see the gentleman's leg is there and the blue line move over to the right a little bit so obviously that line moved a little bit to the right so you know Gary's staying relatively pretty centered-ish right and you can kind of see a little bit of difference you know when the left arm is kind of parallel to the ground it's a little bit different look in terms of what it look like I, I from what I see here it looks like he's having you know he's having more of this look in his backswing Ari is excuse me and Gary's kind of having more of you know a little more kind of straight up down look and get rid of both those lines but you know for the most part he's not really kicking in too much extension in his spine which you know we can talk about in a second but you know again Ari pretty much stay a little bit more centered we kind of talk about this a little bit but it's just basically kind of feeling taller in the backswing and getting a little taller into your backswing not necessarily kind of staying down low so much and staying taller that's when I put that club kind of above your or just below your chin and actually kind of maintain your levels ish a little bit on your backswing so that's the feel there so that looks pretty simple for you since you've worked on that before but you know, that's kind of a start here so you kind of compress a little bit on the way back and you know it doesn't really get too much extension in his upper part of his spine and he really kind of sinks down low and really keeps a lot of right knee flex and it's kind of has a sinking look almost in kind of his backswing which can be a good or bad thing, but for him, it's not necessarily the best thing because especially what he does in his downswing. So, Ari, right, make sure you're working on that still. It's kind of pretty simple. All right, but now let's kind of take him to the both at the top of the backswing here. And this is kind of what I wanted to talk about mostly is that basically I just drew a purple dots on their left logo, on the left glove, on the left logo of their glove, and just kind of trace that through their downswing and kind of trace their right shoulder too with the red dot on their downswing. So, I got it stopped at the top, relatively speaking wise. Let's just kind of bring them down real quick. So again, remember that blue, that yellow line I drew on Gary moved a little to the right, so it's not going to look like it's just behind it, but again, he doesn't really move too much. Okay, so that's Gary. Now let's watch Ari. Can you see uh, some uh, <laughs> very subtle differences going on here? 
So also you can start seeing some differences in how they're using your body and how that kind of affects the hand pat. So Ari would have what I call a sharp kind of pull down hand pat. And Gary would kind of have more of a wider, little pull down-ish, right? But a little bit wider hand pat, right? Which means, in my opinion, he's not kind of having, he's having more of kind of a stable, you know, concentric circle, which isn't necessarily happening, but it's kind of keeping it simple. But his hand pat's a lot wider and a lot more stable, where Ari's is kind of changing directions a bunch. And he has to do a lot coming down to really get that club to be more in front of him and get the club face relatively squarish and do a lot to kind of hold on to that club face. So, you know, let's take him halfway down here. Where Ari comes down. And I want you guys noticing couple of differences in here. So Ari doesn't have that much lag. It looks like there's a lot more lag there because he's actually flattening the shaft a bunch. All right. But I want you to take it to notice that Gary here, just when that left arm is parallel to the ground. All right. And they look pretty similar, right? Ari has a little bit more flattening of the shaft, which is why it makes it a little bit more lag. But I want you guys to notice some differences from this point. So, you know, from the top of the back scene, they both have a little bit more of a pull down move, which Gary's kind of pretty familiar to have with because it kind of has like a really kind of harsh, like, almost like whipping action almost at the top of his, his backswing. I call it kind of collecting. He's got kind of like a, a hard collect at the top of his backswing. Imagine if he had a whip there. It almost looked like he was kind of whoosh, whipping that club at the top of his backswing as a kind of a visual. All right, so it's kind of like a huge catch. All right, so this is where we start seeing some pretty big differences in here. So Gary is going to have his right shoulder, you know, from this point, it's not going to get any further back from here. All right, where Ari's shoulder is actually going to continue working back and working down. All right, so Gary's shoulder is going to work down, out, and a little forward. All right, so as we can start seeing here in this example, watch how Gary's right shoulder from this point is going to kind of get to its lowest or furthest point back, and it's going to continue working down, forward, and around. Okay. He's not going to get any further back. All right, so again, his right shoulder is going to work down, around, and forward. All right, so he's turning his body, he's having a little bit lateral bend to the right, and he's getting a little bit more right arm bend, and keeping a little bit there, which has helped create that rotation and that lateral bend just a little bit. Okay, but he's not sitting there trying to crank this angle here. He's not really sitting there trying to maintain a lot of left wrist angle, and he's definitely not trying to sit there and maintain like the angles, you know, staying at 90 degrees the entire, entire time. It's just kind of happening. All right, and it's evident by that because if you watch the logo of his left glove, when it gets to kind of mid thigh point here, watch how that logo actually starts working up and the angle between his left wrist and the club shaft is actually starting to uncock a little bit. That's what we call ulnar deviation. Okay, so then from there, that logo is gonna start working up like most players do. He's got beautiful, you know, bow of that left wrist and impact, which I'm a big supporter of. I think that's actually a great way to make impact with most players, since most players do the opposite. But I want you guys just noticing that you know, from here, when his left arm is put out of the ground, that club is no longer necessarily working, you know, to the, you know, not necessarily working down exaggerate, exaggerated amounts, but it's actually working down, down, around, and up in kind of equal amounts. Okay, so he's got kind of like, if you imagine a hula hoop there, if you just connect those dots with those purple, it's kind of nice and wide and very kind of nice and concentric. You can make an easy, nice little circle out of there. Okay, now let's watch Ari here on the left. So you get him to kind of the top way left point, right? And Ari said to me that he's been trying to really work on maintaining lag and his golf swing and you know, doing everything he can to get the club in more control, which again, I get the idea what you're trying to do, but you're kind of doing it, you know, the manufactured way. So what happened with Ari here is that his right shoulder does work down, but never ever starts working forward. All right. So his right shoulder is actually going to go further back. His head's going to be pointed more to the right with his eye line pointed more to the right. Right? And I want you guys noticing is that when his hands get mid thigh, just how sharply up they have to kind of work with his right shoulder continuing to work down with his head still behind him. All right, so if you guys notice, if you try connecting a dot with Ari there, all right, you're going to notice that his hula hoop, if I drew lines on that, would be kind of bent a little bit more sharper. All right, so if Ari here does not get that left shoulder working up and back fast enough, Right, where it's kind of cranking way higher than that, he's never going to hit the driver that great. And unfortunately, I think in my opinion, if that left shoulder starts working too far up too early and obviously too much with your kind of that compression on the lower back, what we're seeing with Tiger Woods, you're going to start seeing some issues with the lower back. 
because when we start getting to this point in our in our follow through, I don't know of how anyone can sit there and say to me that this is a comfy and nice natural spot to kind of be. So try holding that pose for me for just five minutes, and you're definitely going to say it's not nice and comfy. Okay. So you kind of look here. I'll see what Gary on the right. Not that much. It has a little bit reverse in action there, but it's definitely not as much as Ari. Right? And that's usually what I start seeing when people try holding on the lag and, let's say, stay behind it necessarily if you want to start saying that. Right? We start getting this kind of sharp hand path in this pull-down motion where the right shoulder is continuing working back and down and it never works down, out, and forward and never kind of actually gets further forward. Right? So it starts creating this motion and kind of hitting up and which is fine, but it starts, you got to start doing a lot of things contorting your body, All right? So I think just keeping it simple there, but kind of looking at that, you have to make sure that that right shoulder is always working down, out, and forward, and it's never just working down, and it's never just working back, right? And it's obviously never just working just forward. We got to kind of have equal amounts of down, out, and forward, right? Which is creating enough lateral bend, creating enough right arm bend, and obviously creating a little bit kind of rotation with their upper body so we start getting that club kind of work our body in a nice kind of flatter hula hoop shape and not so kind of, you know, sharp like Ari's there on the left. All right, so give you guys a couple, you know, ideas on how to kind of work on this, All right? I got Pat Perez here from last year. I think he was, you know, doing some good things in his golf swing at this point here, and he was really kind of trying to take a little bit out of this golf swing, just like Ari had, where, you know, Pat Perez is known for really kind of tilting back and the right shoulder kind of staying behind and, you know, kind of having a really, really sharp hand pass. So, over here, he was working on a basic kind of where he's feeling a lot less kind of wrist hinge here at this point and really not trying to feel too much wrist hinge on the way down. He's more just kind of feeling that, that right arm is going to get underneath the left arm at this point here, maintain some bend, right? But he's not going to try kicking in so much lateral bend to the right and not necessarily not try to not to stay centered. He's actually trying to stay centered more here and try to kick in the blended amount of lateral bend with rotation and making sure he's actually staying a little bit more center and not tilting back so much. All right, so this would definitely be a drill that I would say suggest for most people. Take a little bit of that wrist cock out and learn how to have that right shoulder work down, out, and forward with minimum, necessarily, not exaggerated amounts of arm bend, having a definitely a little bit of it. I don't want you sitting there straightening this right arm out too much there. But definitely getting the sensation that that right arm is underneath the left arm a little bit there with some bend, right? And it's honestly going to feel a little bit unnatural for some of you because a lot of you guys can sit there and hang back and try holding on to all this lag and try creating an over excessive amount of lateral bend to the right. It's going to feel like you're really tall. It's going to feel like you're a lot wider. Right? But what you're going to start noticing is that you're going to start taking a little bit shallower divots and that you're also going to start noticing that you're going to have a lot more consistent low point. Where if sometimes with people on TrackMan and FlightScope that I see with Ari a little bit, they can start having their angle of attack numbers vary, uh, vary a bunch. Right? So... They could be seven degree, degrees down one day and then three degrees down the other day, right? And unfortunately, if your angle of attack is changing that much, that's really going to affect your curvature and your trajectory a bunch with your irons and your driver, right? And sometimes if you're sitting there and you're hitting down seven degrees with your, your irons and like Aria sometimes hits like five degrees up on his driver, that's going to start hitting, you know, it's going to start being pretty difficult to try and control your golf ball when you have that big of variance between your irons and your driver. So... You know, with the overall better pivot, you're not necessarily going to be hitting up on your irons, but they're not going to be 7 degrees down with the 4 iron and then 5 degrees up with your driver because you're trying to get it airborne. All right, so this is a one way to definitely kind of work on that. And as you can kind of see, Pat Perez goes through here. All right, he starts kind of just doing this, going through his bag. He's definitely sitting there feeling that sensation of, you know, kind of creating kind of like that hand path going up and really kind of widen around his body. But he's not really trying to sit there and excessively hold a crazy amount of angles and a crazy amount of lag. So I don't definitely want to sit there and take that lag out. That lag is a good thing there. We want to make sure we're still creating good lateral bend. We're still creating a good right arm bend coming into impact. And we're still making sure we're maintaining a little bit of those angles. We're not trying to forcefully hold on to those. Okay, so that would definitely be one way to work on that. Now, some people say, well, what about Sergio Garcia? What does he kind of look like with his golf swing and yada, yada, yada? Well, Sergio is a great driver of the golf ball and obviously the, I think the world's greatest iron player right now too. So let's just kind of take a look at him. So if we get to the top of his backswing, all right, let's get Sergio, comes down, he's going to crank it, flatten that club a little bit. Let's watch his right shoulder when the left arm gets parallel to the ground. All right, just do the same thing what I was doing with Ari there and Gary Woodland. Starts coming down. He's going to have definitely some pull down. 
Right, there's his right shoulder working down. A little back there. Nothing wrong with that. But let's watch the difference here. All right, now it's just working down. All right, draw another logo on his golf club. All right, so he's definitely gonna have a little sharper hand pad. He's hitting an iron here. Okay, another logo on his glove. Logo on his right. Oh, look, they have his right shoulder still not really working down, or still working down. All right, but what have you noticed? Obviously, you see there, his hand path still really isn't that sharp, is it? And his right shoulder is definitely not working back. It's still working down, and guess what? Now it's working more forward. All right, he's creating a much lateral bend as he wants. And if you notice this hand path too, it definitely has not continued just working down. It has now still continued working up. All right, so even the players that have extreme amount of ag, they're still not sitting there trying to create this extreme amount of lag where from here they're still pulling down that right shoulder is going to start working down and around that left shoulder is going to start working up and around right which is very very evident so if you guys start noticing here when that left arm is let's say parallelish to the ground let's just draw one say simply right here as he starts going up Notice how much that left shoulder still working up. Okay, still working up. Now it's working behind. All right, so that also gives him, so he's creating a right lateral bend. He's extending with the spine going through. He's not just staying down flexion here. He's getting a solid rotation with the shoulders, and he's creating a nice flatter hand path here. It's not necessarily sharp, but it's definitely not as sharp as Ari's there. So, you know, pretty much keeping it simple here, guys, we definitely want to make sure we're staying a lot more centered. We want to make sure that we're getting a nice wider hand path, not trying to create too narrow of a hula hoop. And just making sure we have equal amounts of lateral bend rotation. And just making sure we're not trying to overdo our lateral bend and try to keep it too far to the right and trying to maintain the short wideness to our golf swing. Some of you may have to feel like that sometimes because you're doing maybe something the exact opposite. But for the most part here, we're trying to make sure we're not trying to hold on to any of these angles crazy amounts and getting this nice kind of wider hula hoop at the bottom and using your shoulders properly and staying a lot more centered. All right, so let me know if that kind of helped out and let me see if you kind of make any more videos here for you guys and let me know how that is. All right, thanks guys. Bye.